Dr. Jensen loved life, from plants to animals to children to his peers. And he was the wonderful kind of person who is willing to fight to make it better for everyone. Many of you have reached out to me to share stories and pain, and I have been honored to hear from you and to make room to hold that pain with you. I too have lost a beloved person in my life to traffic violence. His name is Jake, and he died in 2011. I still think of him every day, and the injustice of his death has been a driver of my work. So I think it is right that we are here today to honor Mr. Jensen, not only in joining together with community, something I've, I'm told he loved, but also to honor him with action. McGinnis Boulevard's dangers lurk in all of our lives. Until recently, I lived on Norman and Humboldt Street, so grappling with the crosswalk was a daily reality of my life. I also lived on Callier and McGinnis, an intersection where another community member, Neil Chamberlain, was killed crossing the street in 2010 in a hit and run. He was 28 years old. Solange Ralson was also killed at that same intersection that year. Since I started counting, and what a terrible activity that is, I know that over 15 people have been seriously injured or killed on McGinnis Boulevard. Every single one of us know that it could be any one of us to be killed there. And if we don't do something, no, not just something, something meaningful, there will be many more who die on McGinnis Boulevard. McGinnis Boulevard is only one mile long. It was widened significantly in 1954 when the Pulaski Bridge replaced the Vernon Avenue Bridge. and now has one of the highest fatality rates in the city. In my activism around this site, I initially called for countdown clocks and more enforcements. We got those. We asked for speed cameras, but we only got a few at school zones, and there are several school zones in the area. But I think it's become clear that this is not enough. We can chase and chastise drivers breaking the rules all day. We can fine and punish and embarrass bad actors, but that alone will not stop hit and run accidents. There will always be a time and a moment when no one is looking. And it's human nature that people are impatient. We all default to rushing and shortcuts when we are in a hurry. That's why I, as an elected official, stand before you to say, it's on us. We in power cannot allow this system to remain. Tiny adjustments are not enough. We must invest in redesigning McGinnis Boulevard just as they did in 1954. <laughs> Thank you. Let's undo the errors of our predecessors and recognize that traffic violence is the most urgent threat to our lives. We will only succeed when we change the engagement between users and the road entirely. As for my part, I promise I will not only push relentlessly for this change, I will also try to further the changes in the rules of engagement. I am a proud sponsor of the Crash Victims Rights and Safety Package in the state legislature, a suite of eight bills that we are going to need all of your help to pass. Without public pressure, these bills are not going to make it to the floor. And I'm hoping that you will help my colleagues, some of whom are here today, um, in solidarity and help us in moving the needle on those bills. I love North Brooklyn. What I love most about it is people like Mr. Jensen, and people like you, who won't rest on injustice. While we cannot bring back Mr. Jensen, I swear I will not, and we cannot let his death be in vain. Mr. Jensen was so much more than a hit and run fatality, and he had so much more to give to our community when he was taken to, from us. Let this loss be a turning point on a bleak violence, or a bleak history of traffic violence in our community. Thank you for coming out today. I am very pleased to have many partners in legislation here, as well as many activists from the community. And the first person I would like to call up to speak is the person who really took charge in organizing this protest and this rally and this vigil for Mr. Jensen. And that is Bronwyn Breitner, who is a PS 110 parent. Please welcome her. Uh, 
my name is Bronwyn Breitner, B-R-O-N-W-Y-N. Wow, hi everybody, um, and Emily, thank you so much for that generous introduction. We could not have a better partner in this fight, and I am so, so, so grateful and so proud of our community for electing you to represent us. We are so fortunate, thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here representing parents of PS110 in this initiative. I feel so grateful. Thank you so much for putting me in this position and for coming out. It's so good to see so many of you in person after such a long time. My name's Bronwyn Breitner. I'm the mother of two young boys from PS110, Kai and Ellery. Both Kai and Ellery knew and loved and worked with Mr. Jensen. I've lived in the neighborhood for 17 years. I'm a member of the local community board transportation committee. I also live one block from the crash site where our beloved Mr. Jensen was killed. And I'm a local business owner. My business is located on the other side of Meeker. So I cross that deadly intersection, McGinnis and Bayard, every day, twice a day at minimum. Our community is grieving the death of our beloved Mr. Jensen. Matt was a witty, smart, fiercely caring educator. He was an advocate for environmental justice and was passionate about educating the next generation in knowing and loving all people and all cultures, regardless of their religion, ethnicity, color, and gender. He set a proud example for our students. He taught my son Kai about the cultural traditions of Ramadan and the Chinese New Year. He also engaged our students with humor and lightness. He was known for reading the instructions to state tests in his Donald Duck impersonation. He loved his students. He loved his colleagues and the families at PS 110 and he was loved hard in return. I hope and I think he would be so proud seeing us all together today, fighting for street safety in his honor. McGinnis Boulevard is a blight on our residential community. It's dangerous. A study of McGinnis found traffic violations every 17 seconds, 17 seconds. Any one of those could have resulted in a death like Mr. Jensen's. But of course, as parents and community members of North Brooklyn, we don't need statistics to know that this street is deadly. It's terrifying to cross this street with my children. I avoid it at all costs on my bicycle. I never traverse it as a pedestrian. Just today and yesterday, I witnessed two cars blowing red lights. Incremental changes have been made over the past decade, like lowering the speed limit and adding countdown clocks. But very obviously, that's not been enough to protect the residents and community members in North Brooklyn. And enough is enough. It does not have to be this way. We, as the North Brooklyn community, do not need to accept yet another highway dividing our neighborhood. And so today, we're gathered here to insist that Mayor de Blasio announce a comprehensive infrastructural redesign of McGinnis Boulevard to make McGinnis safe. Yeah. Together, we are not leaving here today without that commitment, I'd like to say. And together we will make McGinnis safe and make McGinnis for the people in honor of our dearly beloved Matthew Jensen. Thank you. Thank you, Bronwyn. Um, next we'll have the principal of PS 110, Dana Rakunas, come up. I 
Good afternoon. My name is Donna Rasunas, and I'm the principal of PS110. Our community has been shaken deeply by the loss of Mr. Jensen. We miss him dearly. His humanity has touched so many, and we are all grieving his loss. It is unfortunate that it takes such a tragedy to bring us together. But this is precisely what we teach our students, to be active members of their community, communities, to notice a problem, an injustice, and to use their voices to make a change, to stand up and fight. So here we are together, asking that our streets be made safer. We ask that we don't ever lose anybody ever again on our streets. Together, we can do this. We can make our streets safer. We love you, Mr. Jensen. Peace to you. And thank you to all the elected officials, our parents, community organizers, and everyone here who um, came together to put this together to, to fight for better community, a safer community. Thank you. Next, we are going to have um, Matthew Jensen's cousin, John, come up and join us um, to speak. Thank you so much for making this. Hi. I thought I would do better than this, but... Some of you are here um, to fix something that's deeply broken. Some of you are here to honor my cousin. Most of you are here for both. He'd be so thrilled with, <laughs> with this. And somehow he's here. He, he would be just so happy with this, this attention and um, opportunity to speak. On May 16th, I was at Maddie's house to celebrate his 58th birthday. Uh, he made a red velvet cake. Matthew made cakes for every occasion. I know, I know he, he fed many of you here. Um, Matthew identified as a, a Christian and, and practiced that in a Lutheran tradition. So he would first be critical of his immediate family. I, I called him... Um, in the body of the Christ, in the body of Christ, he was the butt. <laughs> Sorry, kids, <laughs> because I'm a Christian butt. <laughs> he was more a Matthew 25 Christian. When did I see you? <sighs> Tired or poor, <gasps> imprisoned <gasps> or sad, and Jesus said. <sighs> Whatever you do unto the least of these, you do this unto me. Matthew did many things unto people, and, and those of you who escaped his humor are rare and lucky. <laughs> he wasn't afraid of a, a joke or a sentence or an opinion. He could talk a lot. So there were a few of us at his house to celebrate his birthday. And, and even though he, he was a Christian he would, or, and a Lutheran, he would, he would celebrate every saint's day. Most Roman Catholics didn't know the saints that he was celebrating. <laughs> really? It's Saint Who's Day and we're eating what? <laughs> He'd also been to many a Seder. He had many Jewish friends and people that loved him because he loved everyone. He was just at a student's first communion days before his death. Matthew would walk into my, my house and his first words would be, um, Salam, Salam Malakim. And I'd answer Malakim al-Salam when he was in a good mood. When he wasn't in such a good mood, he would go, 
Johnny, every step's a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> so then the, the following day, the 17th, we met at my house. He was part of my pod, so we, we spent COVID together. Um, the 17th was the first time that we'd really been with other people. So I have an outdoor space, and, and I think there were eight or nine of us there. Another red velvet cake um, and wonderful treats. People from South Dakota are concerned that I'm being fed because that's what you do when somebody dies, you bring them food. I said, yes, but instead of jello and tuna noodle casserole, I'm getting more Polish and Italian and Chinese and Japanese treats because he had such a wide variety of friends and this is such a mixed neighborhood. Uh, so we were together on the 17th to celebrate his birthday, to celebrate Norwegian Constitution Day, <laughs> and uh, to celebrate Queen Sophie of the Netherlands' birthday. Because <laughs> that's what you do. And, and uh, we sang happy birthday to him <laughs> in Norwegian and English and Spanish. And we tried Croatian, but that, that wasn't very pretty. Um, but I have a video of it that I posted on Facebook. <laughs> and about 12.30, the morning of the 18th, he left my home <laughs> to take the trip that he has taken a thousand times before. <sighs> and I got the call in the morning and after I figured out what Matthew they were talking about. And then somehow through the fog, I heard it was McGinnis Boulevard and I wasn't surprised. <laughs> even though he had traveled that. And, and I've kind of struggled with doing this, given the, the tender quality of, of our crowd, but this is his key. That's the key to his house. It doesn't work. This is the key to his lock. <laughs> This is the key to his mailbox. <clears throat> this is his cell phone. <laughs> it's it's uh, just so awful. And the only thing that gets me through this is people like you guys. Um, people that, that really make Maddie's memory alive. And you all said really wonderful things um, about him some really, really positive things. But I think I was talking to the teacher-parent coordinator. I said, yeah, but he was also a crab ass. And, <laughs> and I think he used the word curmudgeon, too, which all of his friends go, wow, that's perfect. Who said that? I'm like, I did. <laughs> so it, it, there's just been such a wonderful outpouring, and you guys have been so loving it. It's no surprise to see so many people there that loved Matthew so much. Um, so in honor of my cousin, um, I, I hope something gets done. To you politicians, <laughs> do something. Do something to save people's lives. <laughs> we don't want to lose another Maddie. I have another hour and a half of remarks about him, <laughs> um, but... but He's sitting, sitting somewhere going, stop him. <laughs> Thank you all so much for doing this. is just so difficult, but, but this makes it better somehow. Thank you. He called this my magic wand because he thought it was fake so I could get a, so I could get a seat on the subway and the front of every line. Very good idea. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so now I'm going to turn to some of my colleagues to discuss some of what we have planned and what we're fighting for. Uh, I also want to say to all of the students who are here to support their teacher, you are doing a phenomenal job. You are doing an awesome job. And let's just take one quick moment, because I know you've been standing for a while, to stretch and do a little wiggle. 
Okay, good. So now I'm going to turn to my partner in legislation in the state Senate, Senator Julia Salazar. Thank you, Emily, Assemblymember Gallagher. Um, you know, this tragedy was not inevitable. And as John said, we are here absolutely to honor Matthew Jensen's memory. He was such a bright light in this community at PS 110. And it's so important that we understand while it, it would be sufficient for us to be here just for Matthew, it absolutely would be. What is devastating is that over the past five years, 50 people have been killed by cars on McGinnis Boulevard. It is sufficient that we are here demanding a redesign, a comprehensive redesign of McGinnis Boulevard for Matthew Jensen, but it is also for all of the lives that have been lost on McGinnis Boulevard. This can't continue. People should not be afraid to ride their bikes in this neighborhood. Pedestrians shouldn't be afraid of walking on McGinnis Boulevard. We need protected space for pedestrians and cyclists. We need protected bike lanes on McGinnis Boulevard. <laughs> enough is enough. And I know that what, what is especially egregious here is that many of you, I see you, have been demanding this for many years. It didn't begin last week. This is outrageous. It doesn't, it cannot continue. Last week in the state Senate, we passed some of the legislation that Assemblymember Gallagher mentioned, including a bill uh, sponsored by Senator Gennardis. Thank you for your leadership. In, on policy that will actually protect pedestrians and cyclists and make our roads safer for everyone so that we're actually sharing the road and it isn't just dominated by cars. Enough is enough. Thank you all so much for organizing this. There is no better way that I can imagine for us to honor Matthew Jensen's memory. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Salazar. I'd like to acknowledge that we have a few other of my, um, my colleagues here for the district. Uh, we have uh, Council Member Steve Levin, we have uh, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, and we have our district leaders, Emil Bazile and Christina Naplatarski. So we are all here together um, to, to push for these changes. So, I am going to now call up Senator Andrew Gennardis, who has been a major champion for traffic and um, traffic violence uh, reform. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, good afternoon, everyone. And my name is Andrew Gennardis. I represent the neighborhood not too far from here, down in southern Brooklyn. And uh, I am both pleased to be with you, but also very upset to be with you here today to honor the memory of our beloved teacher, your teacher, Mr. Jensen. I have gone to too many of these vigils, protests, gatherings, memorials, too many to count, and I've only been in office for three years. Too many to count, just in my neighborhood alone, because the unfortunate reality is that no matter how much we all seem to be in agreement that the roads are for everybody and that everyone should be able to cross the street without living in fear, uh, pedestrian and cyclist fatalities have continued to go up year over year. 
In fact, this year we're on pace for one of the worst years in nearly a decade in terms of the number of people who are killed on our streets from reckless driving, from irresponsible driving, from things that could be completely prevented in the first place just with common sense improvements to our neighborhoods. And so, you know, we are, we're here in memory of Mr. Jensen and we're here to call for the passage of eight really important pieces of legislation up in Albany, some that I have authored, some that my colleagues here have offered. Uh, you know, we passed three of them last week in the state Senate. We have a few more to go. Uh, the Crash Victims Rights and Safety Act, very important. But the reality is, and let's be very honest, these laws will help us, for the most part, after something happens. There is so much more we could be doing to improve our neighborhoods to prevent people from getting hit in the first place. We can be redesigning our roadways. We could be making our streets safer. We often judge how safe our streets are by how many people or how few people were hit, seriously injured, or killed. And I think that's the wrong way to evaluate it. It shouldn't be about the number of people who are hit or killed. It sh we should really think about the number of near misses. How many times has someone here almost been hit by a car? How many times has someone here had the green light and had to jump back from the curb because someone took a fast turn? How many times has someone had a close call because someone thought it was more important for them to beat the yellow light to save three seconds worth of time? All of us. All of us. Even Mr. Mayor is raising his hand. All of us. It doesn't have to be this way. We can improve our roadways. These roads belong to all of us. And as I've been working on street safety since I got elected to the state Senate, and it's deeply personal to me because my grandmother lost her da daughter in a traffic crash even before I was born. But the impact of that loss has stayed with my family for decades. But now I have a five-month-year-old at home that I have to push in a stroller. And I have never been more fearful of crossing a street even with a light in my favor than I am when I take my own son out to go for a walk or go to the store. We don't have to live this way. There are better ways. We can make an improvement here and we will do everything we can to make sure that we continue to fight for fair and just laws in Albany, but also make sure that we fight and we make sure that every single one of our roadways is accessible and safe for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Gernardis. I, d I want to um, acknowledge that I have also Senator John Liu here uh, to support us. Um, but first of all, I would like to introduce Mayor de Blasio. I had the opportunity to speak with him a few days ago and tell him what a critical reform this would be for our community. And I'm very honored that he has come out to speak with us today. So, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Emily, thank you for the conversation we had just a day or two ago. And I could hear the passion in your voice as someone who's fought for a long time for changes. Everyone, it's time for profound, real change to protect the people of this city. Our colleagues in Albany are here are the difference makers. They are the ones who understand there's been too many crashes, too many deaths, too many injuries that didn't have to happen. I want to thank everyone who represents us in Washington, Albany, and the City Council for standing up and protecting people who walk the streets of this city and ride bikes in this city and making sure that we change what is a broken status quo. Let's thank all of them for standing up and making a difference. For years, we have been trying to undo the car culture laws which favored cars and motorists regardless of what happened to people. We brought Vision Zero to this city. In the beginning, people said, oh, Vision Zero, the people wouldn't accept that the people in neighborhoods all over New York City would be so much more interested in their cars than in human life. Guess what? New Yorkers proved them wrong. Human life matters a lot more than cars and trucks in this city. So it's time for a change. It's time for a change. Vision Zero has taken us somewhere better. There's much, much more to do with Vision Zero. 
I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But what we need right now is action in Albany, and we have only two more weeks, only two more weeks to make a change we need. We need the Crash Victims Rights and Safety Act. We need it now. We need it now to save lives. Everyone here is thinking about this issue in the most personal terms. This is not a piece of legislation that's just something happening far away. This is about saving lives, and unfortunately in this community, you are feeling pain and loss right this moment. To everyone from PS 110, I'm so sorry that you're gathered here in pain and mourning. Matthew Jensen wanted to help kids. He was the kind of human being we need more of. Loved kids, served families, loved life, he loved soccer, he loved gardening, he just was a good human being trying to give back to the world and now he's gone. And this community is in mourning. He's gone because of a hit and run crash. He's gone because someone killed him and then left the scene. And this is what happens too often. Just weeks ago, and I was there, I was in the room when we had to tell the wife of police officer Anastasio Sakos that her husband was not coming back because he was killed by a hit and run drunk driver. Somehow over the years, in our society, the notion that someone would get behind the wheel drunk became normalized. It's not normal. It's not acceptable. The penalties have to be much greater. That's what this legislation would do. It does a lot of things, but one of the things it does is it says this actually can't go on like this. There have to be consequences. We lost another teacher, Helen Sink, in Harlem. We're losing people who serve us. We're losing everyday people. We're losing moms and dads, seniors, kids. It has to stop. So everyone, I, I know everyone here feels it, but I have to ask you to tell everyone else in your life how urgent this is. We have good leaders here. We need everyone in Albany to understand this is their responsibility. They cannot leave Albany until they pass this act and protect our children protect our teachers, protect our seniors, protect our lives. Are you ready to tell them that? Yes! Are you ready to make your voices heard? Yes! We need you. And we're going to apply Vision Zero right here, right now. On the Guinness Boulevard because it's long overdue. We are putting money in the budget immediately to redesign and fix McGinnis Boulevard once and for all. I want to thank Assemblymember Gallagher. She told me the history. We said it's time. We're putting the money there. We're going to come to the community and say, how does this need to look that it will work for everyone? We're going to just plain do it. We have to do it now. We have to do it now to save lives. So some of you will get this reference as I conclude, but it's something that's moved me a lot. When I was coming up, we all have music that speaks to us. And I was always inspired by the clash. And the simple phrase, the future is unwritten. The grip that cars have on our lives doesn't have to be. We can create a people-centered society. We can write new laws. We can change our streets. We can change our way of life. It does not have to be just because it was before. We, in this time, get to write a new future. Together, we get to write a new future for them. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Let's hear it again for this redesign of McGinnis Boulevard and show the mayor that he's doing absolutely the right thing. Okay, so we have another parent coming up. I, I know this is a long program, <laughs> but I, I trust you're all still with me and still feeling it. So I would like to invite up um, Yuli Fisher, who is uh, a parent from PS 110. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Uh, my name is Yuli Shu. I am a parent of two at PS 110. Um, Thank you, Bronwyn, our Community One board member and Transportation Committee member and fellow PS110 parent for organizing this event. Thank you to Senators Kavanaugh, Salazar, Gornardis, and Liu for attending today. Um, the Crash Victims' Rights and Safety Act are a very important set of state-level traffic bills that will help New York State make um, our streets safer. Um, I also have some education bills I want to talk to you about. <laughs> uh, heck, Calandra needs to be repealed, but uh, that's for another day. Um, and thank you, Assemblymember Gallagher, um, for always bringing your support to our community um, and also advocating for the victims' uh, crash rights and safety bills. Um, and we hope you'll fight just as hard um, as you have shown today that you will for the Transportation Alternatives petition, which specifically addresses the dangers of McGinnis Boulevard with a plan for a comprehensive redesign. We know that you've been a longtime advocate for traffic safety on McGinnis Boulevard, speaking out in 2012 for safety measures and accountability, accountability, accountability for drivers who speed or cause injury or death. Um, as a community, we are also concerned about accountability. The driver of the Rolls Royce has not been caught yet. Um, the, with the cameras in the areas, it's hard to believe that the NYPD does not have a picture of the driver or the license plate of this vehicle. And without accountability after accidents causing injury or death, how can our community truly feel safe? Mayor de Blasio, thank you for coming today. We support your state level traffic safety bills and thank you for the budget money for Division Zero um, for our McGinnis uh, Boulevard. Um, can we get a timeline <laughs> and contact information about that? Because we want to make sure that this happens. Okay. Yes, yeah, sign our petition. Will you sign our petition? For McGinnis. Okay, we'll send you the link. All right. Um, and then, uh, so one also while you're here, <laughs> can you do what you can in the, um, as mayor to make sure that the driver is found? You know, work with the NYPD and get the camera footage. Let's find the guy who took our teacher away so early. I guess I want to change to answer you. Yeah. We will find a driver. I don't have a doubt in my mind. I will get an update to you, to the assembly member immediately. We will find the driver. With a Rolls Royce, we will find the driver. Thank you so much. Um, wow, there's really nothing more to say. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, and everybody here for coming in support of our teacher, Mr. Jensen. We hope you're watching today, and this is for you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Okay, I, a, a little other safety, sun safety. If you're feeling a little too hot and faint in the sun, you absolutely have permission to go into the shade. Also, if you feel desperately that you need water, I happen to have some right under this podium. <laughs> so let me know, and if you've been standing still, make sure you wiggle a little bit and get that blood flowing. Okay, you're doing awesome. You're like perfect activists right now. Okay, so next we're going to hear from um, FSS member Fem Fabiola Mendieta. Safe streets. I'm sorry. It's okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Fabiola Mendieta Cuapio, and I am a member of Family for Safe Streets. My five year old son Brian was killed on October 31st of 2006. That is now how parents should have to mark Halloween. Brian was the most precious gift ever, and just before he died, he had the opportunity to travel to Mexico to meet my parents and also the town when I was born. I never thought it would be his only and last trip to Mexico. Every three days, 
someone from New York State, joins my horrible club. It is heartbreaking to stand here today, step away from where we belong. PS 110 teacher Matthew Jensen was killed. These preventable deaths leave a deep void in our hearts and in our lives, to say the very least. Traffic-related deaths and serious injuries are preventable. If only New York City officials had designed my Guinness Boulevard the right way, putting people first and not cars, Matthew and so many others will still be with us today. If only our New York State legislators prioritize safety and pass the Crash Victim Rights and Safety Act, a bills that together create a life savings comprehensive approach to traffic safety and support for crash victims in New York State. We might not be here today gathered remembering Matthew. Now one more family should have to bury a loved one in a preventable traffic crash. <sighs> Major Di Blasio, thank you so much for the announcement today. And we need to hold reckless drivers accountable and to make sure families are provided all of the essential resources, compensation and support services they need and deserve to get through this nightmare. Next week, my fellow family for Safe Street members are embarking on a relentless 11th hour journey across New York State. With just a few days remaining in the legislative session, they are taking our advocacy on a four-day multi-city 1,000-mile trip. One mile for every person killed in a crash in New York State every day, every year. They are traveling across the New York State to rally local communities and call on key state lawmakers to support this life-saving legislation. This no-nonsense bill should not require such Herculean efforts, if only our elected officials will act with the urgency that this crisis requires. This work that I do is for my son Brian, for Matthew, for his family and for the enormous community mourning his loss, for all of our families for Safe Street members and for all, of New, for all New Yorkers. We don't need sympathy. We need to fix my guidance boulevard, and we need to pass the Crash Victims Right and Safety Act. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Part of the family. How do you do? I know you care. I know you do. Okay, so in one minute, we are going to go to the site of the crash with the mayor. Um, but first, I have a very brief announcement from the Congresswoman regarding um, this district. Thank you so much. Very briefly, Matthew Jensen is not just a statistic. He was a beloved teacher and friend. He was an ESL teacher, and so was I. And he was struck by a drunk driver, and so was I. I happened to live. I had to spend a year and a half in the hospital. But we all know there are too many accidents on McGinnis Avenue. I just want to thank Mayor de Blasio for redesigning McGinnis. It's long past due. But I was going to ask for him to spend some of the $100 billion that the federal government sent back to the city to do that. But he, in his heart, announced it anyway. He is also, at my request and others, expanding 3K to every child in public school in the whole city. I asked for my district. He said, let's do it for the whole city. Thank you for that, too. That's another improvement. And we had another rally just yesterday. We need to take down that terrible debris in Bushwick Inlet Park. So please find $18 million in that $100 billion to take it down so we can announce that and do that too. Thank you so much. Thank all of you for being here. All of you have made this happen, caring about your community. Emily, thank you so much. I yield back. Thank you very much, Congresswoman. So we have 
a few more speakers after we go to the vigil site. So if you would return with me, um, there are a few very essential people that we'll need to hear from. But for now, we're going to take a break from speaking and we're going to go to the site of the crash. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk together down um, towards the Met um, grocery store and then we're going to walk down uh, Driggs Avenue and um, and then down McGinnis Boulevard on the sidewalk. And there we will um, lay flowers for Mr. Jensen and uh, then we will return to conclude our program. Thank you. So follow, um, so who, okay, follow Kevin who's raising his hand over there. He's gonna lead the walk. <laughs> 